Um, they have been a fixture in the, the LA photo community for longer than I've been in Los Angeles. And Sammy's always has a special place in my heart because it's 30 years ago this summer that I met my husband at Sammy's camera. So, um, I, as I said, yeah. yes, it, I have a special, special place um, when it comes to Sammy's. So as Ruri said, my name is Veronica Cotter. I am the Education, Development, and Western Region Manager for Hanamula USA, and I am right here in Los Angeles, specifically in the South Bay. Um, I recently celebrated my 40th anniversary in the photo industry, first with Oriental New Seagull, the Seagull G black and white paper, and then with Ilford Photo. I was with Ilford Photo for 17 years, and I have been with Hanamula for eight years now. And the common thread with all, their all of these companies, it's the importance of printing and paper choice. Uh, during the darkroom days, it was, is it RC? Is it fiber base? Is it neutral? Is it cool tone? Is it warm tone? Is it single weight? Is it double weight? And those are some of the same considerations with digital papers. What's the weight of the paper, the GSM? Is it a textured, a smooth, or a glossy paper? Is it warmer, neutral, cooler? These are all the same considerations as we look at our image and talk about paper. And I am joined by my, my colleague and my dear friend, Kevin Graham, who is my counterpart on the East Coast. Kevin's based in New York. And Kevin and I have known each other for 25 plus years. We worked together at Ilford. And we're always having these conversations about image, the importance of printing and paper. So we encourage you to ask questions. Kevin and I will both post our contact information in the chat. If you think of something a week from now, a month from now, two months from now, please just send us a note. If you're working with the papers and you have some questions, really don't hesitate, send us a note. Uh, and Kevin's going to start and give you a, an overview of our 437-year legacy. And then we'll come back and we'll, we'll start to do a deeper dive into paper. Well, great. Uh, hello from New York, and I appreciate all the shout-outs, uh, uh, folks here on the East Coast. Uh, like I said, Veronica and I have known each other for a long time. We both are, are true photo weenies. I'm back to shooting film now. I got a little disillusioned with the digital. I'm not sure why. So I'm shooting some XP2, no surprise, and I've got some tungsten 800 in my Leica. So I'm, I'm back at it again. I uh, picked, picked up a very old Konica camera on top of it. So we want to review who we are, what we do, and, and give you a very high-level overview of our company. Uh, Hanamula, and if you, as Natasha said earlier, if you type in a version of that, uh, up it will come. Uh, Hanamula is a global company, and we got people from all over the world. I saw somebody from Africa. That's terrific. Our products are found in over eight countries around the world. I want to highlight a few uh, items on our website that I hope you'll spend a little bit of time on, and that is who we are and what we really do. Uh, our history, as Veronica said, goes back to 1584. When we talk about that, at 1584, people always, uh, and Veronica will agree with me, they cock their head like, look, you, you must have been 1884. No. Our mill has been sitting on the same plot of land for 437 years. Our mill is located in Dossel, Germany, and there's a great history bit here, and there's a timeline that you can download and take a look at a little more clearly so you can see some of the things that have gone on. The mill, as I said, sits on the same plot of land as it has for the last 437 years. It, amazingly enough, completely off the grid. We, uh, we take the spring water out and use it unfiltered, and that is our secret ingredient, water. We pull it out of the ground, we use it, and we put it back cleaner. The local town next to us is called Einbeck, and they've been pulling the same water out since the late 1300s for the local beer. Uh, we source uh, sustainable alpha cellulose, which is wood-based uh, so, uh, um, products and, and cotton products from around the world. Energy, uh, natural gas, uh, we use solar power and we recycle everything that we use. We're in the process of going through a due diligence process for recycling packages, 
for rolls that we use to try and eliminate the plants. So there's lots of here, but it's important to know that our objective is to minimize the impact on the environment and the climate. The last thing I'll talk just about, and Veronica is going to hit highlights on this, is our commitment to the green rooster. We introduced a natural line a year and a half ago. Uh, bamboo was already in it. We introduced hemp and agave, sustainable plants that grow all over the world, and proceeds of the natural line are given to eight worldwide initiatives. And again, spend some time looking at this. It's not, it's not homework or anything like that, but it does give you a sense of what we do and, and how we do it. So I'm going to turn this over to Veronica, and she's going to do a little deep dive into some of the collections. And apologies, our website seems to be running a little on the slow side, but we'll get through it. Okay. So I'm going to talk about some of our fine art ranges of papers. But before I do, I, I want to focus on a few things. We use really high quality materials, cotton, alpha cellulose, which is a refined wood pulp, and also natural fibers, bamboo, hemp, and agave. Um, we talk about papers in the context of matte, textured, and glossy. And Kevin approaches this like a mantra. Matte, textured, glossy. Matte, Very good. glossy. Very good. Um, our papers have a longevity rating of 100 years plus when used with pigment inks. Uh, and Natasha mentioned profiles. And before Canon or Epson introduce a new printer, they send one to our tech applications manager in our corporate office just outside of Chicago. So he and his counterpart in Germany create all the profiles for that specific printer and all our papers. So literally, as you, as they launch a printer, you can simultaneously download the profiles. Um, you'll hear us refer to, to papers in the context of base tint, neutral, cool, warmer toned, uh, textured, glossy, pearl, satin. These are really important considerations, as I said earlier, whether you're printing at home or you're working with Roger or a printer that's doing prints for you. Uh, if you look at the About Us section, you'll look at um, the digital fine art. And then there's also a section on artist papers. So if Kevin was a traditional fine art artist, this is the section he would go in. So there's a, a great overview of our papers for pastel, watercolor, sketchbooks, et cetera. But we're here to talk about digital fine art. You'll see the natural line, matte fine art, smooth, textured, glossy, and canvas. I'm gonna talk about the natural line first. This is the most recent series of papers that we introduced uh, a year ago October at Photo Plus Expo. They're all sustainably sourced fibers. These are TIPA award-winning papers. They are all warmer base tint papers, which is one of my favorite categories of papers. They're used a lot for um, uh, portraits or skin tones because warmer tone papers are more flattering for skin tones but not exclusively. I've seen beautiful landscapes. I've seen street photography, black and white and color reproduced beautifully on the natural line of papers. You'll note, you'll note on the website, and I think Hanamula does a really good job of doing a, a cutaway so that you can actually get a sense of the texture of the paper. And that's really the, the biggest limitation of doing these events online is that if we were all sitting around a table, I'd be passing around sample prints or swatch books and you could actually feel it. But this really does a good job of showing you the degree of texture and I also think you get a sense of the warmth of the paper as well. Of the three, the bamboo is the warmest. Hemp and agave have the same white point or base tint. Of the three, the uh, 
the agave has the most texture. And I actually just had a note from someone who did a, a series of tests, both black and white and color, and made a point of letting me know how impressed she was with the DMAX of the agave. And we'll talk a little bit more as we get into the textured section about textured, you would think softens, counterintuitive, it actually gives a little more detail. Each range of paper, there's a corresponding sample pack. Two sizes available, eight and a half by 11 and 13 by 19. Each sample pack has two sheets of each paper in that range. And one of the great things is they're all marked on the back. So as you print out a series of images and begin to narrow it down, you then have the name of the paper so you can create a reference for the project you're working on and projects to come. You will also see there's the ICC profile, the download section. It's very easy to download the profiles. There's also an FAQ section in here. And we want to point out to, to make sure you note the media setting for the paper, which is included in that. So natural line, our papers are available in both cut sheet and rolls. All papers go from eight and a half by 11 up to 17 by 22. And in rolls, everything goes up to 44 inch. And we actually have papers that are also available in 60 and 64 inch paper. So that is the natural line. So the next range is the Matte Fine Art Smooth, or we just shorten it to smooth. The rice paper. This is one that you might literally overlook if you are at Sammy's and you're looking at their swatch book. The rice paper is 100 GSM, so a lot of times it goes from one of the heavier weight papers to the next and rice paper gets lost in the middle. As I said, it's 100 GSM. It's our version of a rice paper. It has the laid lines in there. It's translucent, so light goes through it. It's, it has a really good heft to it. You can lay a lot of ink down on the paper and it won't buckle. And a, a number of really interesting and creative applications. A few friends of mine actually make scrolls. So they will print an image, they fold the paper, they crease it, and with the sewing machine, they will stitch it. They stick wooden dowels in top and bottom and finish it off with the hardware and create their own scrolls. A few years ago, we were faced with the, uh, the project of replacing some window shades in our, our mud porch. And we had a few quotes and they were just way too high because the windows are, are somewhat narrow. So we got a little creative. We printed images, we trimmed them to fit the window, put up decorative push pins and voila, problem solved, decoratively solved. So I, I described these, these different projects just so you get a sense of the versatility of the paper and also how robust the paper is. Anytime you see photo rag and you see that we've actually trademarked it, that means there's 100% cut. We have two double-sided papers, photo rag book and album and duo. The difference between the two, so the book and album is a grain-specific paper, and the grain paper is a book. Ultra smooth is just that, it's a smoother paper. It's a brighter white. And in this particular range, we have what's referred to as a deckle edge paper or a torn edge paper. And Photo Rag 308 is that paper in the smooth range. And I don't know if you can see it, but it has that torn edge, deckle edge on all four sides. And a deckle edge print looks beautiful in a float frame, or actually if you put it up with a, a magnet or a, um, a clip system so that you can see all four torn sides. Um, something I forgot to mention, the photo rag paper 
comes in three different weights, 188, 308, and 500. 308 by far is the most popular. And actually, Photorag 308 is the most popular paper across all brands worldwide and has been for many years. Uh, no surprise, there are two corresponding sample packs, 8.5 by 11, 13 by 19. And you also see a category of photo cards. Seven papers are available in 4 by 6, and three papers are available in A5. And I'll spend a few minutes afterward and just go into a little more detail about the photo cards, which I'll tell you up front is probably my favorite product that, um, that we have. Um, in this particular range, you have the Photoreg 308, which is available in 4x6 and A5. Photoreg Ultra Smooth is also available in 4x6. And then the Photoreg 308 is also available in A5. Okay, now we're going to go into the textured papers. And I think I said earlier, textured is that range that is kind of counterintuitive. When I first joined Hanamula, coming from the dark room, I just assumed that textured papers would soften the image, exact opposite. There's something about that texture that gives it another depth or dimension. And actually I find myself when I see something printed on a textured paper, kind of trying to you know get in a little closer because there's just this detail that you want to immerse yourself in. William Turner is absolutely one of my favorites. Um, and once again, you can see from this, this cutaway, we've done a good job of showing just how much texture the William Turner has. And William Turner is another paper that's available in multiple weights. So a 190 or a 310 GSM. Kevin and I did a, a presentation last year with uh, a Canon and one of the tech reps at Canon loves this paper. So I asked him, I said, Dave, how would you describe it? And he, he really thought for a minute and he came back and said, handmade. I couldn't have described it any better. Uh, Albrecht Dorr, you see that each of them have a very unique kind of texture to it. Torshan is absolutely another one of my favorites. What I love about it is the, the texture on this paper really creates a nice border or frame or mat for the image. Most people that print with Torshan do so with a border. And even if they use a mat, they cut enough of the mat so that you can still see the paper. German etching is another beautiful paper, a little more subtle, but definitely has texture to it. And museum etching, definitely the most refined, and when I mean the most refined, probably the most subtle. And at 350 GSM, this is the, the heaviest. And then in this particular range, we have two decalleged papers. So the William Turner 310 comes in a decalage, and then the museum, museum etching. So those are the two decalage papers. Well, you bring up a great point. I mean, deckled edge is sold in a box of 25 sheet. It's already hand torn. And here's the great thing about it. Veronica brings up a great point. It's, it's application driven. And it's available in eight and a half by 11, 13 by 19, or an impressive 17 by 22. Uh -huh. So you, you got photo rag, our favorite paper, museum etching, and William Turner. You have a lot to choose from. But if you're looking for something a little different, yeah. And I do know people who hand tear it. Unfortunately, I've tried to hand tear it, and it looks like I hand tore it. Yeah, so, I'm not brave enough. I'm, I, yeah, yeah, so yeah. It's, it's I'm not going there. <laughs> Uh, there are two corresponding sample packs, and then in the uh, 4x6 museum etching is available as a photo card. And once again, there are data sheets here and links for the um, uh, profiles. So I am going to stop sharing and I am going to turn it over to Kevin. So. Uh think, again, we say over and over again, smooth, textured, glossy. I, I must say this a thousand times, smooth, textured, glossy. That's how you divvy up the collection because we have some 30 papers in our collection. And I use this term all the time. You, you can talk about our papers and you, you, you want to catch people before their hair catches on fire. You want to catch that, just that moment and, and say, okay, do you like smooth, textured, or glossy? Okay. I like 
glossy. I like texture. And again, papers are emotional choices. So I'm going to talk about uh, the glossy line of papers. And the glossy line of papers is the biggest collection of papers. It has eight papers in it. And people say, oh, eight papers, how do I choose? Well, uh, let me try and dissect that for you a little bit. If, as Veronica said, and we keep saying over and over again, think texture and base tint. I want something very glossy. I want something very rough. Uh, I want a hot press. I want a cold press. I want rough, something with a tooth, or I want something very smooth. Um, so the glossy is a collection of papers that's reflective. So even though some of them aren't what you would say, oh, that's not really glossy. If it reflects light, we lump it into the glossy collection. Uh, and there are a couple of very interesting papers in here. One of the interesting words that keeps coming up in the glossy collection is barida, a barium sulfite coating, which comes from the analog days. And it's a coating that's put on top of these papers. And yes, a barium sulfite coating is a barium sulfite coating. But again, we go back to what we originally got into the conversation with, that the texture can be a little bit different, more glossy, less glossy, and the base tint will be just slightly different. Photo rag barita by far is our most popular glossy paper. It's a, it reminds me of a gallery grade four paper. And if you've seen our corporate image, it's got David Lynch holding either a rooster or a hen or a chicken. We're not quite sure what that is, but it's this heavy 350, 315 GSM. Uh, it's just a beautifully, beautifully well done paper. So if you're looking at getting into something, whether it be black and white, and this has a very classic look to it, or color, it does a very, very nice job. Available in very wide rolls all the way to cut sheets and available in uh, the smaller four by six and A5 format, which we'll spend just a little bit talking about. Just a little. So if you're looking to get into it, this is a great paper that we would certainly recommend to do it. But you come back to me and say, well, it's, it's too warm tone. I want something brighter. Again, a glossy sample pack will help you define the range just a little bit better. The other thing that we wanna to just touch a little bit that, that we introduced uh, two years ago, and that's our, our photo rag metallic. Now, when we came out with metallic, Veronica and I were like, well, eh, I don't know, we'll have to see. This is really needs to be seen. It's a beautiful paper. And yeah, these are just images that we printed. But imagine these on a very soft metallic paper that's got this pearlescence finish from monochrome images to, to really- oh, I this one guy speaking and uh, fuck. <laughs> So, anyway. what? Okay. No. Thank you for trying. Oh no, I'm trying to find my. Okay, uh, hello, are we good? So, okay. So anyway, I virtue it's photo rag metallic. I certainly encourage you to, to find my. To give it a little bit. Thing I on the bottom that has my. Might be able to mute. Might be able to mute by, by chance, that would be great. Kathleen, mute, please. Yeah, that would be great if you'd mute yourself. So. Thanks. So the photo rag uh, metallic is a great is a great one to choose from, and again, uh, available in in all formats. And if you want something that's perhaps a, a little more warmer toned or a little more um, a whiter base, then the glossy pack will help you sort that out a little bit. Okay, that's the digital fine art collection, the natural line, which is part of smooth, the textured, and the glossy. And I'll just touch very briefly on Honda Mula photo collection. That is printing every day. These are non-archival papers. Mostly they're made of resin-coated materials. And if you're just looking at, I need some good RC products that maybe have some specific applications, Beautiful Photo Pearl, that's a nice heavy 310 GSM. Uh, photo Gloss Barita, which is a collaboration between us and Harman Technology, the black and white film company. Uh, and we've got some canvases in there too. Sample pack available for this at the same time too. Everyday printing, little different price point, okay? Finally, before we uh, turn some uh, this over to Veronica for a, a few great applications, uh, is our canvas material. Our canvas materials are available in rolls only, most of them from 17 inch up to 60 inches wide. Uh, we've got a metallic canvas, doesn't really do justification in the 2D world, but when you see this neon images, uh, greens and, and natural pictures do very well. We've got 100% cotton canvas, we've got bright white, and two of our canvases, Goya canvas and metallic, really don't need to be varnished. They stretch very, very well. Uh, living in New York, it gets cold here. I had a canvas metallic rattling around in the back of my car for a year and a half, 
and it, it held up amazingly well, uh, stretched on a canvas. So it, it, it did a nice job. So think smooth, textured, and glossy in the digital fine art collection. Sample packs are a great way to get into the line. But again, smooth, textured, and glossy. And then you think about, well, do I want something with a little warmer tone, a little whiter base, and, and, and such like that. So I, I, applications, we're going to talk to that. Uh, somebody asked, do we ship into Canada? Uh, I will email you the details. We have a distributor in Canada, and we have dealers all over the Canada. So anyway. And Kevin, before I, I get to the photo cards, um, just a couple things. When Kevin showed the image for the fine art Barida, or excuse me, photo rag Barida, and we talked about, and I think we share this, it's one of our go-tos if someone says, I want to replicate a silver gelatin print, that tops both our lists. Don't pigeonhole the paper though. I have seen some exquisite color images printed on that paper as well. So just know that all these papers reproduce both black and white and color images beautifully. But I think I speak for Kevin again when I say we both have our short lists of papers for those that are trying to replicate um, a silver gelatin look. And I saw a comment in here that um, someone took Natasha's class and they printed um, black and white on a textured paper. And I, I'm gonna paraphrase here, but I think you were really blown away by the results. And I'm telling you, it's the, the range of papers I always encourage people to test because it's the furthest thing from their mind and it really reproduces with these vivid uh, details that you have to see it to believe it. Right, Natasha? <laughs> You're on mute. Um, I was just in complete agreement. Uh, you have to sometimes experiment mm -hmm. and, and print the same image on some uh, papers that appeal to you. And you'll be so surprised to see the results and how the image really speaks to you through the paper. Um, you know, the same image can look very different on a textured versus a smooth bamboo versus the photo rag barata. Um, um, you know, it, you just have to try different papers, experiment. So I think it's really important to experiment. That's, 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 a, great, that's a great point. Don't limit yourself. People say, well, I don't like glossy. And I say, oh. well, well, maybe your image likes glossy. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't, don't back yourself into a corner here. Um, yeah, yeah, play around with it a little bit. Well, and if we were all sitting around, um, I might hold this one up and then pass it around. And I'm sure there would be people in the, the group that said, Oh, that is, that is beautiful. I think that is the paper for my next project. And we talk about the bamboo and it has a slightly warmer base tint and look how it reproduces the colors. And you're convincing yourself more and more that this is your paper. So then I show you this one, which is on the William Turner paper. And you begin to scratch your head a little bit and think, well, oh my gosh, I just love that texture and look at all the detail I get in that succulent. And then I'm really gonna mess with you because then I would pull out the photo rag metallic and you'll see that, that it has this pearlescent, opalescent sheen and then this beautiful base tint. I guess what I wanna say is this one isn't better than this one and it's not better than this one they're all different and they're delightful for different reasons. And that really is the beauty to Natasha's and Kevin's point of taking an image and trying it on different papers. And as I mentioned, sample packs are available in eight and a half by 11 and 13 by 19. The beauty of a 13 by 19 is that now you can print multiple images on the same piece of paper. So you've got some vivid colors, you have skin tones, and for a current project or a future project, you can see how black and white color, all of it reproduces in this case on the photo rag bright white. And then I have the bamboo, which is slightly warmer and it's a great way to, to evaluate papers. Um, can I, can yeah. I just say just one thing? So I, I come from the analog days. I was a complete darkroom geek. Love, love, love the darkroom. Had a color darkroom, had a black and white darkroom. Had, oh. But what I want to say is that 
We used to make test prints and test strips in the darkroom. Well, think how easy it is to do that on your computer now and lay out several different strips and see how it plays on the paper, different images. We couldn't do that in the darkroom. So um, it's, it's kind of cool, you know, test it out and, and see what you can come up with. It's a really cool time to be involved in image making. Yeah. It's, it's analog, it's digital, it's hybrid, it's, it's, it's a little bit of everything. Um, and I, I don't think there are any limitations, maybe your imagination. I, um, I think one of the items that came up in the chat, and I am answering some questions in the chat, is, is what kind of printer. Uh, you need an aqueous printer. Uh, you, you, ideally, you need it, you know, eight plus inks. You ideally want it to feed from the back. You, you don't want to buy a printer that you have that feeds the, from the front and, and then makes that 180 turn. These papers are heavy. Uh, some of them are very stiff. They won't make that turn. So uh, buy a nice printer. Look, Canon and Epson and some of the HPs will do a great job in the wide format. The, the new Canon um, uh, introduced a new 300. They've got the 1000, which Veronica uses, the new P700, the new 600. There's lots to choose from, uh, and those will be individual choices that I'm sure the folks at Sammy's can help you with. Well, and Paul asks a question that is is one of the harder ones to to answer. You know, are there um, uh, papers that are appropriate for theme, emotion, style? You know, street photography, I think, lends itself to maybe a glossy paper like a photo rag baryta or a fine art baryta satin. But um, I'm always a little anxious to, to, to get into that one because there may be someone here that would say, what are you talking about? Photorag 308 is my go-to for street photography. So I'm not trying to evade the question, but... Um, I don't know, did, did Kevin, Natasha, do you want to weigh in on that one? I, I think you should, uh, for, for example, just take the street photography, uh, um, you know, example. I think you should try it on the Photorag Varieta. I love the Photorag Varieta because it kind of really does, like Veronica said, it does mimic the darkroom silver gelatin paper. Yep. And yep. it is a little bit warm tone. And that was my go-to kind of, you know, Agfa Putriga look, whatever. Um, so, <laughs> uh, but y again, try it on that paper, but then try it on something else. The thing I've also found, uh, sorry, go ahead, Kevin. No, no, I was just going to say, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, <laughs> witty <laughs> pearls of wisdom from the East Coast. Yeah, try it. <laughs> it, it. I know a number of people, my husband included, that are starting to scan their, their analog archive. And it's interesting. Some of the images he prints on something that looks like silver gelatin, but he has also printed some of that same archive in those images on Photorag 308, German etching. Um, in some cases, Torshan, he's having fun experimenting with those images and different types of paper. Um, but I wanna, I, we'll go back to questions. Um, oh, light painted astrophotography. I have seen some amazing astrophotography on the Photorag Metallic. Yeah, killer, killer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that was an easy question. <laughs> okay, now we'll go back to photo cards. So as I mentioned earlier, Two of my favorite items, and Sammy's has these. They have sample packs, they have rolls, they have cut sheets. They're the photo cards, and it's 30 sheets. They all have rounded corners, um, and they come in this nice durable tin. As I mentioned, you have seven options in the four by six, and it's one type of paper in a tin, and there are three options in the A5 size. And where this all started for me was my husband. Years ago, he worked in the music industry and he had two big books, 16 by 20 and 20 by 24. And those were the books that his rep would send around to the different record companies. Several years ago, he started to scan those images and create a four by six portable portfolio 
which when he's out and about, when we used to be out and about more and are looking forward to again, he'd have a random conversation with somebody. Someone said, hey, what kind of photography do you do? And he'd pull out his portable portfolio. And so here's his title page, 30 years of, of music, or excuse me, 25 years of music. And then these literally are all the images that were in that 16 by 20 or 20 by 24 portfolio. So in this case, that's Elvis Costello and Tom Waits, and he's identified the artist and then put his copyright at the, the bottom. Now the paper is not coded on the back, so you couldn't do another image, but there's enough tooth or texture that you can do text. So we started to think, well, if you can do text on the back, what else can we do? I've met, and Kevin has as well, photographers that are using these as promo cards or leave behind cards. So Heather Smith and all her contact information. My husband and I have started making our own postcards. And we actually received a postcard from someone. And I have to tell you, they go through the mail really nicely. <laughs> um, this was sent to me by somebody in Seattle and there's not a bump or bruise on it. During the holidays, I always make um, a couple of my traditional uh, favorites for the family. And year after year, they've asked for my recipe. And I thought, okay, Veronica, get it together here. So there's my cheesecake. And my recipe. So <laughs> this this is the reason that two of these are our top ten sellers is because of her. She is the. I love them. I'm telling you, I love them. Um, we did our holiday cards this year. I started making my own birthday cards, and obviously last year more of us were, or all of us were, spending more time at home. And I used to travel as did Kevin all the time. So I wasn't home that much. Um, and I thought, okay, what's productive use of my time? So I started going through my old Polaroids and scanning them and doing four by sixes. And now I can keep the originals in my archival storage box and share these with family members. Um, during the holidays, I hope you can see this, it's some craft string and little clothespins. And what we do is we put it up across the, the mantle and we have pictures of family members and we refer to it as those that are dear but no longer here. So it keeps family members with us during the holidays. That same concept I have in my office from one corner to the other, and I've got my own little gallery in my office. So there are just so many things. Uh, people have told me they get their grandkids involved in art projects where they'll print their kids' images, um, create postcards for them to send to other family members. Um, the A5 size, uh, that's my niece when she got married a few years ago. We turned this into Christmas presents that year. Uh, my husband has a friend here in town who's a photographer and they started the porch project. So our friend would say, hey, I'm gonna stop by your house at noon with a, with a tin. So before he got there, my husband would put about five to 10 images in the tin and have it ready for him. So they did the no touch exchange. And then in about a week, they'd connect on Zoom and, and do a, a portfolio or excuse me, a print critique. So it was oh, a nice I, way to do your work. Question, question from Ralph about printing on the back. You want to describe the process? Okay, for that? So it's, it's kind of like uh, painting a bridge. We do all the images first and then we'll wait. It. Even though it's instant dry paper, we like to wait. And then we create a, a template in Word and then really flip it and then do the backside. There is a, a template on the website. Uh, I will tell you if you have the Canon printer, we have the Pro 1000. We literally push the paper guide over and drop it in. Uh, if you have questions, really don't hesitate to let me know. Uh, I've talked to people through these before and would be happy to do it. Um, but yes, to, how do you print on the back? You create a template in Word and then um, 
that's, that's yeah, that's right. But but the back doesn't have a receiving layer on it, so don't print an image or you'll be sorely no. disappointed. We I love can, you to burn yeah. the paper, but but don't be disappointed. And as Veronica says several times, there's seven different papers, but don't get overwhelmed. Photo Rag 308. I love this. I printed some of my images on New York City, and I love the the tattered feeling as you handle these after a while. Or a uh, Photo uh, uh, Rag Varita. I printed the uh, Christmas balls across from uh, Radio City Music Hall. They look better on glossy. Photo Rag Varita glossy or Photo Rag 308. Just keep it easy, in my opinion, and then play around with the different surfaces. Museum etching a heavy paper might mail better, but it might not mail better. So I could go on and on. Actually, I think next week or the week after, Kevin and I are doing a class specifically on photo cards. Um, it's six hours long. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, no, uh, somebody Bye. asked, do you, do you mount Barida on die bond? Yeah, uh, we've used die bond in the past for trade shows. I don't know enough about it, but we have mounted um, uh, the Barida paper on die bond. Uh, if you want to email me separately, I can put you in touch with our tech guy if you need more about it. We use somebody up in the Chicago area, and I don't know who we use. And I don't know what we're using now. And Roger's also at the Service Bureau in the Fairfax store. He's yeah. a great resource as well. I think Roger's doing face mounting. Um, they're printing on metal. So I, Roger's also a good outlet for those questions as well. Um, I'm just looking to... Oh, oh someone's using classes. the photo cards. Um, so um, how do we sign up for the class of photo cards? Um, I, it's, uh, I, will I will put in the chat, uh, it's, at the, it's at the APA New York chapter. I don't think it's been posted yet, but I'll drop it in the chat here shortly. I'll, I'll dig out their website, yeah. And uh, we've talked a, a fair amount about analog and darkroom, which is near and dear to many of our hearts. Uh, we also have a paper for alternative process. It is called Platinum Rag. It's good for platinum palladium, cyanotype, Van, Van Dyke Brown, gum, and I don't know if I'm forgetting anything, but it works well with all of those. Uh, and Sammy's has that too. Of course they do. Um, so if any of you are into all process, and then we also have Sumi E, which is great for uh, cyanotype specifically. And I, I, once again, we could go on and on and on. Four of our papers are available in a limited edition uh, portfolio box. It's 50 sheets of paper, 50 vellum interleaving sheets, a pair of gloves, and a few of our certificates of authenticity. And someone asked me, well, we're not doing portfolio reviews in person. Well, there will come a time when we do. And in the interim, it's a great way to store your work. If I could show you our darkroom and also our studio, it is just um, bottom to top with archival storage boxes. And then we've identified either the, the date range or the particular project that's in that box. I'm just, Kevin, any other questions here? Uh, no, I'm not seeing anything. I just posted on uh, where we'll be on May 10th. So. Okay. So we do our little giveaway? Yes, absolutely. Um, Guess what we're giving away, Veronica? Guess what we're giving away? Well, we're going to give away photo cards and we're going to give away some sample packs. So um, we're going to be randomly choosing four lucky individuals who are still here for these four items. Um, we do have to say we can't ship out to anywhere other than the US. So if you, yes. mm -hmm. so if you're not, um, if you don't have an address in the US, then um, please let me know if I choose you. And I'm sorry, but we can't, we can't ship to you. So what we're gonna do is I'll pick a name and then if you want to privately message me your email address, would that work Veronica? And then you can reach Absolutely. out to them for their yes. mailing address. Mm -hmm. okay. and, and, and somebody asked about the price of sample packs. The, the, okay, so eight and a half by 11 and 13 by 19. Eight and a half by 11 will start out, you know, at MSRP around 12 bucks and go on up to about 20 bucks. Again, that's MSRP. The 13 by 19s, about 18 bucks all the way up to $34. Again, that's MSRP. Um, so, and again, two sheets of each, and Veronica always points out, they are labeled on the back. So if you're like me, you fumble papers all around all the time. You don't have to guess which side is, is up or guess which paper it is. 
And Rui, someone's asking, and I think I can answer this one, if they can make an appointment with Roger. Absolutely, because I've been up in Roger's, um, the mezzanine level, and people are, are coming in that have appointments with him. So I would say absolutely. And I would encourage you to do that. Roger is a remarkable um, resource as far as printing. I'll go ahead and put his email address in the chat. It's oh, Service great. Bureau. And then um, this is the number for the store. So yeah, use those two. All right, so uh, the first giveaway we have is the four by six by 30 sheet photo cards and tin mm -hmm. photo rag, right? That's the first item. Yep. And Ralph. Shelby is the winner. Yay, Ralph. <laughs> so Ralph, if you can go ahead and send me your, um, either privately or publicly, if your email address, that'd be great. Okay. And then the second item we have is the A5 photo cards plus 10. Mm -hmm. photo okay oh, nice. that's nice and that's going to go to leslie fields leslie if you're here please go ahead and drop me your email address okay and then we've got two last um prizes 13 by 19 sample pack and that's fine art glossy and matte fine art smooth mm. right one each. And as Kevin likes to say when we talk about 13 by 19 sample packs. Go big or go home. <laughs> you know, don't don't mess with the smaller size. Just buy the bigger ones. You, 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 every time I say this, and every it, time. Yeah, it cracks me up every time. So the first one's going to go to David Markovitz. Congratulations, David. And go ahead and send me your email address. And let me just write this down. And finally, the last one is another 13 by 19 sample pack. Mm -hmm. And that's going to go to Jane Chen. Jane, congratulations. David, my email is edu at sammys.com, or you can put your email privately to me in this chat to Sammy's. And Kevin, there was a question um, about distribution in Africa. Well, um, there's been conversations going on behind, it's amazing. Uh, I, I suggest that person look at our export uh, in, in the website. We have a find a dealer. And if you can't, then we can send us your information and we can have Luciana, who's our export sales manager, get in touch with you. I, I, don't, I don't know what we have uh, available specifically, but we know people who do. That's right. Yeah, we, we, we can help you. So yeah, uh, discounts. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> all right. I've dropped Veronica and our email address and phone numbers uh, in the chat again. And, uh, you know, we, we, you know, we hope we un uncluttered your mind a little bit in terms of our brand and our product. And JP's asking about stacking prints. I would wait 24 hours. Um, once again, even though they refer to these as instant dry papers, and I've heard our tech guy say the same thing, wait 24 hours and then sure, go ahead. Um, Kevin, did you by chance, so we have, it's, uh, 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 it's yeah, a, thanks. a catalog, I'll what I like about it is that it pulls all the highlights off the website and puts it in one place. Yeah, so I'll, I'll put a link in my Dropbox link because it's a 10 meg file and I don't know how any, any other way to, to send it. And I'm sure the good folks at Sammy's can help you out, but I will put a link to my Dropbox in the, in the uh, chat right now. So feel free to, 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 to take advantage of that. And it's got everything we've talked about on here. And again, you can refer back to the website uh, for the portfolio boxes, which aren't in there. And then we've got these cool signing pen duos, which are also on the website too. So, um. And as I said, the nice thing about it, if you're interested in the, any of the products, really, it breaks it down by range. 
and item number and description. So if you're ordering from Sammy's or you're walking in the store, you kind of know what you're looking for and have the corresponding catalog number. Yeah, and if you get stuck along the way, the good folks at Sammy's can help you out and, and, and Veronica uh, can mm -hmm. either. It's not a problem, we're happy to help, so. And all the stores carry the papers. Uh, if you go into the store, each of them should have a swatch book, a six by eight swatch book, so that you can really go through and review the papers. Um, and it basically goes through the different ranges just as we did tonight from natural to smooth to textured to glossy and then canvas. And just know if, if you're talking to somebody and you say, I love, I love the smooth paper. Well, that's part of it. That's the range. And then to identify the, the papers within that range really zeroes in on that particular paper within a range. Anybody else have? Yes, we love Sammy's. Well, I really love Sammy's. <laughs> Anybody else questions, questions? <laughs> I think we answered them all. And if we didn't, I'm sure we'll get some emails. You know, we want to thank everybody for showing up. I especially want to thank working for Veronica and, and working with Rui and Natasha. It's been been fun. So uh, thank, you. Very fun thank you. Thank you, guys. Hey, Ron, Ron asked about a swatch book. If you send me a, a note, I'll tell you how you can do that. Yes, you can. I'll give you the item number and then you can place a special order with Sammy's. Um, and yeah, thanks, Rui. Thanks, Natasha. It's Thank you, guys. You Always good hanging out with Kevin. It's and lovely. Seriously, if anybody has questions, please, please, please don't hesitate to get in touch with either one of us and sign up for Natasha's class. Yeah, She's sign up, amazing. sign up, sign up. She's an amazing teacher and printer. And go big or it's go home. It's a really fun, it's a fun class. And uh, if you're not printing, then you got digital dust in your hands. You swipe yeah. left and right and that's it. So start go printing. Ahead. Just take one of the mics, stick them in the microwave on the plate. So that that have a good night, everybody. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.